What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics where it's all about classic bodybuilding and today we are 15 days out from the Portugal Pro which I'm very excited for. So this is actually going to be one of the last chess workouts before the contest so let's get everything out of it we can. So we're gonna start with just an easy warm-up exercise, the chest press. So we're going to go as heavy as we can to maintain all the muscle mass and fullness we can. But at the same time, I don't want to risk too much by doing free weight movements right from the get-go. So starting with the chest press is a great way to warm up the chest properly. So let's do this. All right, so as I mentioned, this was actually before the Portugal Pro where I ended up getting third in my classic physique class, which of course is still an amazing result, but we are going for the first place in another Olympia qualifier in a few weeks, also in Europe. So that's what I'm doing at the moment of recording, but I still have some high quality videos left over that picks media recorded for me so i work with him uh, for a long while now so every time you see high quality videos like this it is him who's recording it and he's available in the netherlands and if you want to check him out check out the description below but anyway this was 15 days out from the portugal pro and what is very important when you are only a few weeks out from the contest is stick to basic movements that you know that you still have a very good mind muscle connection with that are minimally injury riskful so any exercise that poses an injury risk don't do it so in my opinion for example if you're training the back and you know you have a, a weaker lower back and you're still doing very heavy deadlifts I would not recommend do that a couple of weeks out from the show anymore, but stick to exercises with a thought of maintaining muscle and not necessarily trying to improve upon your lifts. So here, I'm about to start the working set on this chest press. So using a full range of motion is very important, whether you're a few weeks out from a contest or you're wanting to build muscle. The bigger the stretch, the better the contraction, and the higher the muscle building impulse will be. So this is the first working set, 135 kilos on each side, and that's about 10 kilos less than what I usually do and a few reps less as well. Well, but that is to be expected when you are a few weeks out from a contest. You can't match your strength compared to the off season, especially on push or chest workouts because your body weight plays a significant role in you being able to brace yourself against the machine or against the bench, which also allows to move the weight easier. So body weight plays a role. And obviously, you weigh a lot less when you're pre-contest compared to the off-season. So, the working sets, however, the volume is still quite high. Because I like to combine the cardio output with the workout output for uh, the burning of calories and fat. And it has been proven in the literature that every minute you do weight or resistance training, you burn more calories compared to every minute doing cardio. So you want to make a balance there. If you do too much weightlifting, you might actually get too catabolic and actually lose uh, recovery capabilities, lose fullness and even lose muscle if you go way too high volume. But you always have to find a good in-between. So for me, that's three working sets on most movements and two working sets on others. So the first two working sets are around 8 to 12 reps, maybe sometimes a little bit more. But the second working set is always what I'm trying to aim for is at least 15 to 20 reps to make sure I get as strong as possible in every single rep range. Next exercise guys, so we just did the chest press, nicely warmed up, three working sets, so the basic amount of working sets to do right now is about three. 
Gonna do the same thing here with the slightest incline Smith machine bench press. It's a very good for limiting the front delt involvement, for maximizing the chest involvement, which is what exactly we are training. Let's do this. And this is also one of those basic safe exercises that I've been doing throughout the entire off season and the entire contest prep. The incline bench press on a very slight incline. So the bench beneath me, I put it at like 15 to 20 degrees uh, to offset the uh, tension in the front delts and to make sure the chest is being the one that receives most of the tension, which is exactly where you want it to go. Because whenever you train the chest, the front delts will always be involved regardless. And what you want to do is shift the involvedness to the chest and less to the front delts. Because Pretty much everybody has big enough front delts, even if you think you don't, then your entire deltoid is simply too small, so the side and rear, but you know, the front delt will always be big enough. The chest, however, cannot be big enough, so we always want to target that perfectly. So this is the first working set. Now only during the first exercise of the workout I noticed that I still have pretty much my full strength, but already here with only 120 kilos, it is far below what I'm usually able to press. Now I press at least 20, 30 or 40 kilos more in the first working set, but that doesn't matter because you still have to hit failure within those eight to 12 reps. And that's when you know that you're still maintaining your muscle mass if you perfect your form you no know, like this go all the way down stretch the chest and then go all the way up in my opinion you should always try to let the bar touch your chest because then you achieve the best possible stretch and as I mentioned before the better the stretch the more of an impulse and signal goes to your brain that tells the muscle to grow, to improve, or at least uh, maintain its mass throughout the cutting season. And that is very important and it's also much safer because then you are already used to that stretch and it won't tear. Next movement will be a free weight movement. And I think it is very important in a workout to have a movement that is free weight and with both arms used individually. So the best course of action now is to use a dumbbell press. It's going to be the same incline as the one we just did at the Smith machine. Very natural, feels very good. We're just going to use dumbbells and we'll see how heavy we can go two weeks out as the third exercise. So let's do this. All right, so the dumbbell press, also a very slight incline dumbbell press, is a slightly more risky movement, but it's one of the best chest builders there is, especially when you do it correctly. So as all exercises, you want to use full range of motion, go all the way down, but you can see that I don't go all the way up, because if I do go all the way up, what happens then is that you lose tension. With the uh, barbell or the bench press, you can go up a little higher because it's easier, at least for me, to keep tension on the chest because of the increased weight. But with dumbbells, if you go all the way up, it's easier for your arms, it happens automatically, to pretty much put the tension on the elbows, which could, in the end, cause elbow pain. And that is not what we want. So keep the tension on the chest, go all the way down, and go up until you feel the maximum tension is achieved and then you go down again. So that is time under tension, uh, the fullest range of motion that actually causes tension during the movement. And the amount of weight I'm using here is also quite low compared to what I used to do, but I do think it's important to keep in a basic movement like this to still uh, stay used to a free weight exercise especially when it's the third movement not a lot of injury risk can happen but at the same time your muscle is still getting that same impulse of trying to balance a weight uh, with these dumbbells which is one of the best chest builders there is next and last chest movement so the fourth exercise will be chest flies normally i like to use the cable but this time we're going for the dumbbell flies why 
I'm very warmed up. I feel like my chest can use a bit more stretch. I actually felt a very good pump and contraction in most of the movements. So now we're going to go for a maximum stretch using dumbbell flies, not to go too heavy guys. This is an injury sensitive movement, especially late in the prep. So we're going to use it as a stretch exercise to uh, stretch out to be pumped up with blood muscle. Let's do this. All right, now it is time for some dumbbell flies and compared to the dumbbell press, dumbbell flies should be done a lot lighter. You have some videos on YouTube or on Instagram where, sorry, where you see bodybuilders actually lift more or lift similar weights doing dumbbell flies compared to a dumbbell press. However, that, in my opinion, is not possible because what you're trying to do with a dumbbell fly is isolate the chest. That is why I like to do it last because then you know after these few sets you have totally exhausted and finished the muscle that you're mainly working today, which is the chest. It's not the front delts. Well, the triceps will be after, but that's not what we're focusing on with this exercise. We're focusing on the chest. And the execution I'm showing you right here, of course, with no tank top, you can see a lot better what the chest is actually doing. So just, with, just like with the dumbbell press, it's very important to keep tension on the chest. You can see it very clearly here. When I go all the way down, you can see the striations right there, obviously because I'm in contest shape here too. But that shows you that the stretch is there. And when I go all the way up, I try to contract as hard as possible, but not all the way because then the tension from the weight will be lost. And I would simply be contracting the chest myself, but the weight would not be causing the tension. And that's not what we want. So what I like to do is when I go up, I like to keep a few, or like maybe half a meter or less, like 40 centimeters in between the dumbbells. So let's say 15 to 25 inches in between both dumbbells to make sure that the tension stays on the chest. What you do want to do is go as deep as you possibly can without the risk of injury. So not too deep because some people have actually torn their biceps or you know other muscles doing that, but just go deep and then go as up as high as you can without losing tension. And right in between hitting the chest and the next muscle group, it's of course important to check your current shape. So I was 15 days out here and I have to say I was quite a lot fuller here than on stage, but in order to, uh, you know, to achieve a dryness, you have to lose a little bit of fullness to etch those details in. Next one, as always, if you follow me, you know the side delts are very, very important to hit in an isolated fashion on a chest day. In my opinion, it is the best way to hit the side delts without any detraction, simply do the chest movements, then the side delts, then the triceps. Let's do this. After the chest, I love doing the side dumbbell lateral raise. If you've been following my channel for a while, not even a long while or a, or a short while, it doesn't really matter, Every time that I train the chest, pretty much, I do the side dumbbell lateral raise. Maybe once in a blue moon, I like to do a side cable lateral raise. But I think this is one of the most impactful movements you can do to create those cannonball delts. Paired with reverse dumbbell flies on a bag day. So this on a chest day, and the dumbbell flies for the rear delts on the back day will give you the most round shoulders possible. And the reason why I like doing this on a chest day is because the, the delts are already warmed up and you might as well finish off the side delts using this exercise. So what I do, two working sets and the last working set, I go to failure again, but then after failure, I like to do a unilateral alternating a uh, dumbbell raise to make sure that I go past failure because now every arm has the moment to rest in between those reps and that causes you to uptake more oxygen and it allows you to do a couple more reps after already hitting failure from that previous set where you use both arms. The more blood and muscle, the bigger it'll become. Okay, it's tricep time. 
And for triceps, we're going to do a super set first. The rope push down is the first movement, and then with a bar, an overhead extension, working the small head and the long head at the same time, and getting a great pump and warm up in the triceps. So let's get started. So triceps will be fairly simple today. The problem I've been having with triceps uh, over the last year or so is that whenever I do very heavy tricep movements like a skull crusher or a French press or a close rib bench press, my left elbow starts to hurt and it's not the bone but it's actually the tendon that hurts and it happens during a very heavy uh, full range of motion French press I did, I overstretched it at the end and from then on forward I've always had that elbow tendon issue. It is totally gone now, but the last thing that you want to do is at the end of a contest prep is reintroduce heavy movements like that to possibly reintroduce an injury you had before. So what I like to do is stay safe and go for exercises that tell me that I can maintain the muscle mass I have. And those are usually the exercises that you can do uh, at least a uh, medium weight with. It doesn't have to be super heavy, but most of all, get a great mind-muscle connection and a full range of motion that causes a lot of blood to rush into the muscle. And what causes more blood to rush to the muscle than a superset? So we're first doing the rope push down until failure, and then moving to the easier overhead extension. The reason why I don't do it the other way around is because I just mentioned you are stronger on the overhead extension, so you want to pre-exhaust the exercise that you are strongest with. Just like doing a leg extension before a squat is much smarter than first doing the squat and then a leg extension for example because then you're worth nothing on the leg extension anymore the same would go for this so on the rope push down you're able to squeeze very nicely all the way to the bottom and when you're able to squeeze then you can achieve that full range of motion and we pretty much go to failure here for three working sets on each movement and going all the way up and all the way down, making sure that you go up higher than 90 degrees, that ensures that stretch, what I was talking about earlier as well, the better the stretch, the better the ultimate growth or maintenance of the muscle will be. Uh, because at this point it is all about maintaining that density of the muscle and you still want to go as heavy as you possibly can but with arms in my opinion uh, as well as taking into consideration injury risk i like to stay a little higher rep so on the first few sets i went you know 10 to 15 reps and maybe on one or two sets of my arm uh, exercises I go in between five and 10 reps, but never lower than that because you then inevitably uh, turn the isolation movement that an arm exercise is into a compound movement by letting other muscle groups help you out and that's the opposite of what you want. Plus, it is far heavier and more destructive for the joints and tendons and that is not what we want here. We only want the tension and the blood to go into the muscle. Now this will be the final working set of the overhead extension. Now as we are reaching deeper and deeper into the workout, my strength is decreasing more and more, especially because I simply am not eating, I'm pretty much not eating any carbs, maybe 100 grams a day, which are burned up just by me being alive. So they don't really help me in the workout as a pre-workout meal is zero carbs anyway. So I quickly start fa failing at a lower volume every time I do the same exercise. And what I do then is do a drop set to extend the set, do more quality full range of motion reps to get more metabolic damage into the muscle, which is another way to maintain muscle mass and even increase muscle mass by causing metabolites to build up. And that in itself causes muscle cell swelling. And that also sends a signal to the brain to make muscles grow alongside that heavier progressive overload that you should always apply every single workout. Okay guys, that was the chest, side delt and tricep workout. Simple, but effective. You don't want to do weird things in the last weeks of prep. 
So this is also a chest workout to do in the off season to build some quality mass. Then I would recommend doing some heavier tricep movements like a skull crusher or a French press for example. But that's about the only change I would make. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Check out VintageNX.com for all your clothing, classic clothing, vintage clothing and more. Once again, thanks for your incredible support and don't forget to stay golden.